Hey, this is Jill Simonella with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I'm currently driving a Ford Bronco. And I know we've already got our first drive review online, and I've done a walk around of this vehicle before, but this is the first time I've driven this vehicle. So what I wanted to do is give some brief driving impressions as well as do another walk around because it's the wild track trim, and it's different than what we've seen before. So let's take a closer look right now. Of course it's starting to rain, so my look at the exterior is going to be very, very brief. And again, it can be because we have seen this before. But I really like the way these headlights are and they sink really well into the grille. I think that's attractive styling and it's very distinctive. And one thing I'll point out is when you turn your blinkers on, this right here, which is a daytime running light, becomes your turn signal indicator. This is the Wild Track model, so it's meant to go off-road and it has some beefier tires uh, to, to manage and navigate some of those mud and rut and rocky situations. And uh, thankfully also a full-size spare. I will also point out that when you open the back, the gate swings out, which is really cool. And then you can lift the top part all the way up. And if you have a canine friend, you can always shut the back and leave the top window open. However, if you're short like me, you're gonna have to climb in the back of the vehicle in order to reach the glass to put that down. One of the things I love about the Bronco is all of the Bronco badging. So you see it um, surrounding the vehicle and especially when you come inside, you've got little touches with the, uh, not only Bronco spelled out, but the bucking Bronco on the steering wheel, as well as on the gear shift. And again, you'll see Bronco sported You'll see Bronco on the dash as well. To power up the vehicle, you have a push button that looks like the headlight. I think that's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, the interior of this is pretty functional and basic. You've got cloth seats. Um, I do like the blue accent stitching and you'll notice that the blue is reiterated and repeated on various places throughout the vehicle. I think that is a nice touch and it looks really good. You have your drive modes here and as you switch through your wheel changes and you have some interesting graphics behind the wheel. I love it when automakers do that. It's a nice little touch. And in this specific vehicle, I will point out, whoa, look at that very large screen. First off, I'm not in reverse, but um, one of the modes that I changed it to turned that camera on. I think Baja mode was where I left it. So it's um, giving you a really good view of the road, but that 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 is a large screen. That is really, really nice. Um, you also have wireless charging in here, as well as a USB-A and a USB-C port. Now, one thing I do want to mention, and I will talk about this a little bit more in my driving impressions, but this is not an ideal situation for a petite driver. Uh, I know that Ford does uh, adjustable pedals on some of their vehicles, but they do not have it on the Bronco. And um, what I wanna say to you is perhaps they should. Taking a quick look at the back seat, which clearly has already had some off-road action uh, and is a little bit dirty. There is your functional seating surfaces again. Uh, but what I really like is you have both a USB-C and USB-A charge port as well as an actual plug. So even though this is more on the basic side of things, you can still charge your devices back here. And that is really nice. In terms of driving impressions, I want to say this thing is a 
beast. <laughs> it looks big, it feels big, it drives big. Um, and, and it's not all that luxurious or smooth. So you're definitely gonna feel a little bit of the of the, of the, of the, of the, of the road and you know, it, it, it's not going to be a super smooth ride. Now, where this vehicle is going to shine is certainly going to be off-road. I'm hoping I'll have the chance to take this off-road tomorrow and get some of those driving impressions. But for now, we're on pavement and um, it's not as smooth as I would want it to be. I mean, it's fine and, and it's what you expect. I mean, if you drive a Jeep Wrangler, you're gonna get something similar to this. And uh, I have the open top here, so it's not a cloth top, it's a hard top, but the top does come out. I do hear a little bit of road noise, wind noise, and all that stuff coming into the cabin, and the engine is also uh, coming into the cabin under hard acceleration. I don't know that any of those things are bad things. Especially when the engine sounds like that. The one thing I do want to say is that my driving position in this is not ideal. Um, as a petite female, um, I am definitely sitting on top of the steering wheel and my knees are feeling a little bit cramped. So this doesn't feel great to me and I don't know that this would be something that I would want to drive on a daily basis just because it's not gonna be an ideal position and I'm literally hitting my knee every time I put my foot on the brake <laughs> and that would get old fast. However, that acceleration and all, I think this is a really interesting vehicle, definitely more on the lifestyle side of things. It's attractive, it's unique, it looks cool. Uh, but brake comfort, even if you're not a petite driver, it's probably gonna be on the minimal side.